Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a puzzle from the Australian Mathematics Competitions. If you like this video, please comment, subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. If you don't like the video, let me know why in the comment section down below. I appreciate all kinds of feedback. Thank you for watching, let's get started. Now, we do have a square, the side length of the smallest square that will enclose three unit circles as shown. Of course, this is without overlap, right? We do have three unit circles that are enclosed in a square of smallest side length. And we're gonna find the side length for this square, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, notice that we don't have, uh, we have some kind of symmetry, but it's not uh, all the way around. Uh, one of the circles need to be you know, kind of in the corner and the other two are touching the sides because that allows us to find the smallest side length square. All right, so what are we supposed to do here? Well, as always, we're going to be making some connections, right? So let's go ahead and make some important connections. Of course, the most important one is going to be drawing the diagonal of this square because that's going to give us a lot of good information. So let's go ahead and do that first. So I'm going to go through these two points. Okay, and then on that point, of course, this is going to go through the point of tangency and we'll make more connections, of course. So let's go ahead and um, label some of these lengths. We know that, first of all, uh, notice that th these are uh, unit circles. So the radius is one every time. So if you draw a radius here and another radius here, okay, you're going to know that these are one, one. And this is a 90 degree angle. This is a 45 degree angle. So we have the 45, 45 triangles here. And then this length is going to be square root of two. That's important. Of course, we're gonna make more connections here. Let's go ahead and connect the centers. Okay, that's also important. And while you connect the centers, I want you to realize one thing that the segment that I draw is not going to be parallel to the sides, okay? So that's what's kind of interesting about this problem is that they're not parallel segments. Okay, another connection I'd like to make is these two centers here. Let's go ahead and do that as well. And then we'll have a nice equilateral triangle in the middle. And the side length for that equilateral triangle is of course going to be a two, right? So I can easily find the height of this triangle, which is given by square root of three, right? You know, in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, this is a 60 degree angle, by the way, the height is, uh, in this case, the longer leg, which is square root of three times the shorter leg, which happens to be the radius of the circles. Okay, so this length here is going to be square root of three. Now, why is it important to find all these lengths, right? You might be wondering like, why are we doing this? Well, the question is finding the side length. And to, in order to find the side length, I need to find some lengths. And I think the diagonal is a good way to start right? Because I can pretty much figure out everything on the diagonal. And if I know the diagonal of a square, then I can go to the side length from there easily, right? Okay, great. Hopefully that's well understood. And But this is not enough. I need to make more connections. And obviously, uh, if we can connect the center to the point of tangency here, one thing to realize though is that this is going to be a 90 degree angle, but that's no, uh, that's not the extension, okay? because that kind of comes in um, 60 degree angle, but it makes a different angle here. Anyway, so this is perpendicular, obviously, and we can make the same connection here, like drop a perpendicular here, and then that's also going to be 90 degrees. And then what is also very important is that connecting these two points. Now, when you connect those points, obviously that segment is not gonna be tangent to the circles, but it's actually going to cross the circles. So it's gonna go like this, Let's go ahead and draw that, like here. This is what I'm talking about, okay? And then, let's see what we have here, right? We can, hopefully we can drop another perpendicular here and another perpendicular here, which will make our calculations easier, of course. Okay, so what do we have here? So I need to find this length, all right? Because I was able to find the root two and the root three, so I just need to continue, uh, but, how do I find it, right? Well, here's the thing. This is one, and you gotta realize that this is also one. And these are 45, 45 triangles, right? So I know the hypotenuse is one, so I gotta divide it by root two, which gives me 
root 2 over 2 here and root 2 over 2 here. So that's going to be the length of that little piece. So I'm basically getting a rectangle here whose base is 2 and whose height is root 2 over 2. Nice. So this is 2 from this point to that point. That should be a 2, but that's not going to help me. What I need is actually this length here, the height, which is root 2 over 2. Cool. So pretty much I found everything except for this guy here between these two points. How am I going to find that? Well, notice that this is 1, right? And this is 1 plus root 2 over 2. And this is also a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Therefore, this height here or length, whatever you want to call that, is also going to be root 2 over 2 plus 1. Awesome. So we were able to find all the lengths that we need. So this means that uh, we're ready to find the side length of the small square that encloses three unit circles. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and proceed. What am I going to do next? The plan is to add all these lengths up, simplify, and then go to the side length from there. All right. Okay, cool. Now there's two ways to go about it. Uh, you can find the length divide by two. So kind of divide this square up into four pieces and then use the 45, 45, 90 triangle or directly go from the diagonal to the side length, which is what I'm going to do. Okay, let's see how we can proceed from here using one of the nice colors that I kind of made. So let's see, what do we have? If you call the diagonal of the square D, then D is equal to square root of two plus square root of three plus square root of two over two plus square root of two over two plus one, right? Did I get all the lengths? I use this one, right? I use this one, I use this one, and I use the last one, okay? All together, they make up the diagonal. Let's go ahead and simplify this as much as we can, and then we'll talk about how to find the side length from the diagonal, which is gonna be an easy process, okay? So I do have some like terms, uh, root two over root two. If you add that to itself, it's gonna make root two. Another root two will make two root two. Plus root three plus one. Awesome. So this is my basically diagonal. If you're really obsessed about writing this in from the largest radical, obviously you can just write it like this. Doesn't really matter, no big deal. But I'm kind of obsessed, I guess, in, uh, with that one. So I'm gonna write it this way. Okay, so this is the diagonal of our square whose side length we're trying to find. Now, what's the relationship between the diagonal of a square and its side length? Let's call the side length x here. We know that from 45, 45, 90 triangle, that the diagonal is going to be root 2 times the side length. But we're trying to find the side length, therefore, the side length is going to be the diagonal divided by square root of 2. So to find the side length for the square then, what we need to do is take the diagonal, okay, let, and let, we call that x, take the diagonal, root 3 plus 2, root 2 plus 1, and divide it by root 2. That's all you have to do. Okay, awesome. But let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit for simplicity's sake. And I'm going to multiply this by root 2 over root 2. That's going to give me what? It's going to give me root 6 plus 2 times root 2 times root 2 is going to be 2 times 2, which is equal to 4 plus root 2 over 2. And then you can basically write this in the simplest form. Well, it's already simplest form, but let's go ahead and write the root 6 first and then the root 2 next and the number last. So that's our answer for the side length of the square. Again, the smallest square that will enclose three non-overlapping circles. So that's be pretty much going to be our answer, the side length for this video. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.